Steve Stolliver didn't lose. He was elected as the president of the Jefferson County Commission at their recent meeting. Steve, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. Good morning. And congratulations to you, Steve. Thank you very much. That was a three to two vote. Is that uh, did that vote go about as you expected? Uh, yes. I mean, um, I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know who was going to get nominated, but certainly I'll take it. Steve, uh, the legislative session is beginning tomorrow, and uh, Jefferson County has uh, an extra half delegate because of the way that they split up the territory during the redistricting that they did. What specifically will you be watching in the legislature this year that can benefit Jefferson County, if anything? Well, the, the one thing I'm going to be paying close attention to is not necessarily something that will benefit Jefferson County, but West Virginia as a whole. Um, we really do need some type of tax reform. They kept our um, budgets flatline in Charleston for the last four years, and now that Amendment 2 has failed, um, I'm hoping that everybody can actually come together in Charleston and come up with some real tax reform that's going to work for the citizens of West Virginia. So when you look at tax reform, uh, are you in favor of sort of rebuilding that from scrap? Uh, Let's start all over with an entirely new tax code, or would you like to see something more deliberate and refined? I would like to see something more deliberate and, and refined. Obviously, I was for, I was actually on your show, I, I was for Amendment 2 yes. and um, made that very, very, very public. Um, that failed, so I think we should go back to the House, and at one time it was the Senate's idea as well, and just eliminate the state income tax. Uh, then we can be with, uh, we can be as equal as uh, some other states out there like Tennessee and Texas. Uh, I think that will certainly help uh, our retirees here in the state. And I think we'll see we'll we'll see some growth because of this. I think when we had Roger Hanshaw on the speaker and the Senate president, Craig Blair, a half percent cut. uh, Well, I shouldn't say half percent, half 50 percent of what the entire state income tax is appears to be the target. Uh, Craig Blair says unless you do 50 percent, there is no meaningful economic impact. Roger Hanshaw said doing 50% at once is a bit much, but somewhere between a one year and less than five might be the way to phase out 50% of the state income tax. Do you agree with those plans as, as you hear them? Absolutely. And it's it's very refreshing to hear that our speaker and, and president of the Senate is sort of on the same page. That's, that's very refreshing for, to me uh, to hear. Um I don't know. I mean, they can be as aggressive as, as aggressive if they as they need to be. Now, they do need to keep some reserves back uh, for a rainy day. We have been uh, seeing some uh, tremendous gains here in the state of West Virginia. You know, what goes up will come down. So we can't we can't uh, wipe out all of our reserves and just this 50 percent um, reduction. We need to do it in a, in a very responsible manner. I'm told 50% of the state income tax would be somewhere around $900 million, maybe maybe a billion, That's which is a pretty large number. Uh, I think we can all agree on that when it comes to the state budget. The state budget's only around $4.6, $4.7 billion. So that's a pretty big number right there. The surplus this year, Senator Blair says, is on target to be somewhere around $2 billion as that, uh, as that shakes out. So the math works out provided the surpluses remain in effect. If they don't, then that creates a problem uh, in the future. John Bodwell. What, uh, do you think it should have some sort of measures in there that if it doesn't work, we have another way to create some revenue? Do you have any ideas as to another way we would create revenue should our surpluses fall? I do not. Uh, I will leave that up to our uh, duly elected uh, delegates and state senators and everybody in Charleston. I don't really have a a, a backup plan for the, how that should look. But you're you're. I mean, I, we all want to see less taxes. We all think less taxes add to growth. But there has to be in case we in case we fall back to where we were a number of years ago, where we were not in this big surplus. If we eliminate the state income tax, all of a sudden, you know, where does the revenue come from for the state services? That that worries me. I mean, I know Jefferson County gets Jefferson County, like Berkeley, sends a lot more money to Charleston than it gets back, of course. 
Um, what do you want to see as the newly elected president of the Jefferson County Commission, just in-house in Jefferson County? What what do you want to see happen in the next year to make Jefferson County a better place to live? Well, we're, we are actually getting ready March 1st to move over our emergency services to a department. That's going to, be, that's going to help out um, the, the residents here in Jefferson County tremendously. We are now taking over. We have bought 10 ambulances from the fire um, departments and, in, and essentially we'll be running that service where we was sort of a, um, a, a hybrid before. Um, as you remember, I was on your show before um, talking about the fish, the fish, this study, excuse me, and, and how we needed to take over this service to make it more efficient. Um, that will take place this year. Uh, something else we're going to be jumping into this year is also our comprehensive plan. State code requires us to update our comprehensive plan every 10 years. Um, we, are, we are starting the kickoff tonight at our planning commission meeting. And, and that will that will transform over the next actually year and a half. What are uh, what are some things that you want to see in that next ten year comprehensive plan that may not have been in the last one? There was a lot of great things in the last comp plan. Um, I just want to strengthen the the new comp plan to show that we are very business friendly here in Jefferson County, and we want to support small businesses to locate here or or large businesses for that matter as well. But certainly, I am a, a, um, a opponent of you know s- small business. I'm a opponent of uh, uh, land rights. Certainly, uh, that's been kind of a contentious area here in Jefferson County, and we just need to be able to grow and have have the opportunity to grow if somebody wants a, lo- a business wants to locate here in the county. Can, can I, Steve? Can I get you to clarify that because you just said you were an opponent of land rights. Is that? I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I am very much for the land rights and, and people having the ability to do what they want on their property. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I thought so. I just wanted to give you a chance to clarify that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, somebody was beeping in there and, and on my phone. When I was oh, no, no. What? And let me, okay, you're saying you want to see some stuff that's pro business, pro land rights, pro small business, medium, all business. What sort of things do you want to see in there? What, what do you believe would be pro-business? What, what specific things do you think would help business? Well, one, one of the biggest things that we need to do is locate sewer, sewer and water throughout certain areas of the county. We're, we're covered fairly well right now, but more importantly is gas. We only have gas to Rockwell, and it would be really nice to get gas into the Burr Industrial Park. And, and surrounding areas where our businesses are located, our larger businesses are located. It'd be really nice to get that over to the former um, uh, Rural Vendors building. It's about a 371,000 square foot building. I'm sure they would love to hook up to the natural gas and get away from the propane, the extensive propane that they use. Uh, we can then perhaps run it, you know, get these lines closer to town. What's, uh, what's going on in that building now? Is there, what, what is, is there a business in there? What's going on? Yes, there's a um, um, a car. It's it's a it's a it's a car parts um, uh, warehouse. Is that and, a, and for life? I mean, the, the the name has slipped my mind. I apologize. Is that a? I mean, what what size employer is that? Is that a pretty good sized employer there in the county? Yes, they're they're employing employing somewhere between fifty and sixty people right now. That's a very good sized employer. Yes, sir. Steve Stolifer is our guest. He is the president of the Jefferson County uh, Commission. Steve, let's talk about impact fees, if we could. Uh, Berkeley County, of course, does not have zoning except for a very limited uh, area uh, and is undergoing tremendous growth. And I think many people believe that there should be some type of impact fee associated with more development in Berkeley County. Uh, The roads are overwhelmed. The schools are overcrowded. And the costs in Berkeley County, of course, are quite expensive when it comes to buying a home, living in the home, and paying the rent, regardless of whether you own the home or you're renting the home. Jefferson County has impact fees. How has that affected Jefferson County's ability to keep up with development? Well, our, if you remember, or, or not, I don't know, our impact fees used to be a little higher uh, in the years past. When I first took office, we 
had another study on our impact fees, and we reduced them from, um, I believe they're around eight thousand and uh, six. I'm oh, sorry, sixty eight hundred dollars for a single family house, and they got reduced to eighteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you do have impact fees, the lion's share of the, your impact fees goes towards your school system. The reason our impact fees got reduced is because we have we have had a declining enrollment in our school system for the last seven years um so what the impact fee money goes to right now is parks and rec uh emergency and emergency services so that would be fire i'm sorry uh uh, uh fire police and and um i think uh ambul- our ambulance services well so i'll have to look uh i'll just i'll I'll have to look that up to make sure, but it goes mm-hmm. to four different entities. I, I, I think I have all of them covered in emergency services there. Is it is um, it possible to change the regulations on how impact fees are used, where they could be used um, for more infrastructure, more so than, I mean, parks and rec, schools obviously are impacted every time we have new schools, but I mean, it, is there other infrastructure? There obviously is other infrastructure that is affected when a new development comes in. Are there are there ways to move impact fees to to help, you know, to allay some of those costs? Yes, um, there are very specific rules and laws how you spend this money. Um, as, as far as if you having some type of infrastructure, like to uh, maybe maybe add. Obviously, the, I'll use roads for example. Is my understanding we could not collect money to upgrade the roads because we don't own the road. The county doesn't own the road. Every every road, every road in the state of West Virginia is owned by the state. Um, but we could help with um, the only thing you really help with is any type of growth that's affected above and beyond. So I'll, I'll go back to the schools. If if Washington, I'll just use Washington High School for example. If Washington High School, they wanted to build uh, four new classrooms, but we could only prove that there was enough growth that we only needed two classrooms. The school board would have to pick up two rooms, and then they could use the impact fees for the other two. It cannot build above and beyond what the growth has. Uh, how, do you, how do you say it? Uh, affected the uh, the system. Uh, same way with uh, Parks and Rec, and there's very specific areas that, that the Parks and Rec can spend their money on. Uh, we cannot use it for salaries. It can only be used for capital, and any type of capital that's above and beyond what we have. Um, it's Again, uh, as far as Berkeley County is concerned, you do have to have zoning to collect an impact fee. Now, they, they can certainly change that down in Charleston. Just one more um, little overreach by the state government controlling the, uh, the the municipalities. The you said your school system actually has shrunk a little bit. I've seen a lot of new development in Jefferson County. Do you have any idea why the school system would have would have gotten smaller? Why the student population has, has shrunk? Um, there's a lot of theories out there. Just to give you an idea, back in 2017, our student enrollment was 9,202. Today it's 8,392. Um, now, there's a lot of, th- now, everybody drives around and they see a new house being built and they just assume that our student enrollment is increasing. In fact, people who are moving to Jefferson County, they're, some of them are retired, empty nesters, or they just just decide to send their children to private school or a charter school where they homeschool. Um, I think Berkeley County seeing a little bit more growth in their school system than we are because they have more affordable housing in Berkeley County, and, and that's typically where your families gravitate to is what they can afford, and, and uh, they're, they're, that's why you're seeing such a, a large numbers in Berkeley County right now. But I do not um, believe that we're, we're growing or going to grow anytime in the near future in our school system because right now we have a lot of small classes coming up through the ranks. We have a very large class in the 10th grade and a very large class in the in 12th grade. They're going to graduate. Uh, if you look back through the numbers, uh, K through se- uh, 8, 9, uh, they're very small classes. And 
that's going to continue to decrease our enrollment in our schools. Um, we are growing in population in Jefferson County. We are not growing in student enrollment. Let me ask you this quickly, Steve. As the new president of the county commission, give me one or two things that you want to see happen, that you want to see the commission implement this year that you think will make Jefferson County a better place to live. Well, I kind of touched on it a little bit um, earlier. I want to I want to really let everybody know that Jefferson County is business friendly, and that's going to we're going to help do that through our comprehensive plan that we're going to rewrite this year. And again, um, something very important to me is to get the, the ambulance service off up and running into the department and uh, to serve our, our community here. Um, I would also like to see our parks and rec. Parks and rec. Um, they keep, continue to doing a great job. We're uh, doing a lot of great things out there for the communities here, uh, the people that live here in the community, for the people. And just to have things for children to do in our community is great. On the bus- and I like to see that continue. On the business side, what are, what are some things you think the county commission can enact that will make it a better climate for business in Jefferson County? I think whenever you cut red tape to, to go through the process is certainly a help. Um, the developers, the small business owners, they want to know what the rules are and they want to be able to get to those very quickly. Um, I think it's a we can certainly help do that in the comp plan. I'm not saying gut anything. I'm just basically saying we just need to have a process, a more of a streamlined process to get through get through um, all the hurdles that need to take place before you can open up a business here in the county. Steve, do you think Route 9 needs improvements from uh, Jefferson County to the Virginia line? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, that's supposed to take place this year or start construction. I do know they have been talking to the landowners, and um, I know a few of them have received letters and offers for the properties, and that's supposed to take place or start construction this year. That is going to be helpful. That'll be the first. This will be a a. Now we'll have a four lane road from one end of the county to the other, mainly going from eighty one to Route Seven. It certainly will help um, commerce here in the county. Uh, it's, it is a dangerous road. There, there's a lot of accidents uh, on the three forty south end of the road here, and uh, I think it's going to help out. Do you know an an expected completion date for that? Um, well, I, I imagine it's going to take about two years, roughly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only been hearing about this road. It's going to take place for, for 20 years. So uh, <laughs> well, we've been patient thus far. We'll just have, have to continue to be patient. And uh, in, in regards to the ambulance situation, Steve, you touched on that earlier today. Is that the final chapter with that? Or is there still more work to do with emergency services in Jefferson County? No, um, that's pretty much the final chapter. March 1st, we're moving again to a, a department, and um, we will, uh, uh, it, it'll be pretty much done. Now, we, we still need to uh, work with our volunteer fire companies and figure out some things that they need. Uh, they have talked to us uh, about a fire levy and some other things to, to help them fund their systems. Uh, we still have to have conversations with them and and kind of figure out their needs. But as far as the um, ambulances, that is the final chapter. We touched on education earlier. How is the relationship between the Jefferson County Commission and the Jefferson County Board of Education at the moment? Um, Funny you said that. I would say probably after our uh, last meeting, it's contentious. (laughs) (laughs) to, to To say it mildly. I would guess, Steve. Can you uh, summarize that situation for our listeners and viewers? Yes. uh, The Jefferson County Commission received a letter from the Faculty Senate uh, from Washington, the president of the Faculty Senate from Washington High School and Jefferson High School. Uh, Basically, the uh, vote of no confidence with the three members of the Board of Education. Uh, We have invited the president. the president of the faculty senate and the board of education to our next meeting uh there we are drafting a letter um that we will send out to i'm assuming the state board of education 
We just finished a discussion in our first hour with the president and the vice president of the Berkeley County Board of Education who are expressing their dismay over the promotion of students who hadn't met the criteria uh, academically to get to the next grade level. And that seems to be becoming a bigger concern this year. And, and I presume you share those concerns as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we don't live in a world where everybody gets a trophy. And we just shouldn't pass these kids to pass them. Uh, they need to do the work. We need to hold them accountable. And when, they're, when they make the grade, they should pass them. And I think that's why um, perhaps some issues why they watered down the final test, the semester exam. Let me ask a quick question. Does the Jefferson County Commission, with the vote of no contest from the faculty senates of both your high schools, does the Jefferson County Commission have the ability to vacate basically other elected offices, the the school board, and call for a new election? The the only code that gives the, the county commission authority is uh, state code six six seven, and basically, if the county commission would take up six six seven, if I remember that code correctly, it would go to a three three member board, and they would make that decision. Steve, I want to thank you very much for your time this morning. Any final thoughts before we move to our commercial break? No, sir. It's been great having you, uh, well, having talking to you all this morning. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Steve. Have a great day, sir.